Hello everyone, I'm Bradley Sport, Assistant Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois. And today's lecture is going to take a look at fractional binary numbers. What do we do on the right hand side of that decimal point and how do we convert that into binary? Everything on that left hand side of that decimal point is what we've been covering for the last two or three weeks. So there's nothing new there. So what is going on here on the right hand side of that decimal point? So looking at this uh, figure right here, you see the decimal point and we remember B0, B1, B2, B3, those are the digits as we go left, you know, to the left of the decimal point, but we can do the same thing going backwards. There's nothing special and it's B negative 1, B negative 2, B negative 3, and so forth. In the same way, when we're dealing with the powers of 2, we've said, you know, 2 to the 0, F2 to the 1st, 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4th, blah, 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 all the way down to the left, and it goes the same to the right. The first digit to the right of the decimal point is 2 to the negative 1. And then to the right of that, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 3, and so forth. And what is a negative exponent? Like 2 to the negative 1 power is the same as 1 divided by 2 to the first power. Or if you want to think of it, you know, 1 over 2, 1 half. And the same then goes for every power of 2 to the right of that. You're basically multiplying by 1 half every time. So the first digit, of course, as we just discussed, was one half. The next is a quarter. The next is an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second, all the way down to you know one over two to some power k. Taking a look at this example here on the bottom of the figure. So if I have one zero one one dot one zero one, like what is that as a decimal value? As you know, here comes binary. So the left hand side of this decimal point is exactly like you've always done in this case just treat it like an unsigned number so 1011 so that's an 8 plus a 2 plus a 1 and that gets me 11 so that's the left hand side but it's 11 point something so that right hand side looking at the first digit that's the one half bit so it's one half and then a zero for the quarter bit so we don't worry about that and then a one for the eighth bit so it's basically you know a half plus an eighth, or four eighths plus one eighth gets me five eighths, but as a decimal then it's 0.625. So the end result of this entire operation here is that that binary value represents 11.625 in, in decimal format. We need some algorithm in order to take a fractional component or a decimal value and convert that into a binary representation. So this is about the easiest one I've seen. If you know a better one, please let me know so I can share it with everybody forevermore because this is all I know when it comes to doing this. So if I'm taking 5 and 3 quarters and I want to convert that into, into binary. So the 5 is always easy because that's we've done that forever. So 101 one dot something. So what I like to do is the repeated multiply by 2 method here. So what you do is you take three quarters and you convert it. It's easier in my mind if you convert it into decimal. So you get 0.75 for three quarters and you multiply that value by two and the result is 1.5. And what you do is you basically every time you multiply by two you take whatever the left hand side of the decimal point from ev you know for every operation and that is the next digit in line when it comes to the binary representation. So 0.75 times two, 1.5 that one gets moved up, so there it is, it's a one, and then this, notice it goes away, so it becomes 0.5, and then I multiply by two again, I get 1.0, so that one again carries into the representation of the number, and there's nothing left to do since zero can always multiply by two to be zero, 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 zero. So in this case, that 0.11 is the right-hand side because it's a half plus a quarter, or two-fourths plus one-fourth is three-fourths or three-quarters, so that is correct. The other two examples are handled exactly the same. So 1 and 7 sixteenths, 1 dot something. So that 7 sixteenths works out to 0.4375 in decimal. And so that's where we begin. So I multiply that by 2. I get 0 0.8750. So the 0 moves up. That's the first digit. And then 0.875 times 2 gets me 1.750. The 1 moves up and gets eliminated. And then that's reduced to 0.75. I multiply by 2, I get 1.5. The 1 moves up, and 0.5 gets multiplied by 2 one last time. I get 1.0. The 1 moves up, and we have been, you know, we're completed here. So the end result is 1.0111.
And so the second one, two and seven eighths, same thing goes. So two in decimal, I'm sorry, that's two in decimal in binary, that's one zero dot what? Seven eighths, and that's 0.875. Multiply by two, I get 1.750. The one moves up. So 0.75 times two, 1.5. The one moves up. 0.5 times two is 1.0. The one moves up, and we're done. So again, 10.111 is the representation of 2 and 7 eighths. And again, this works for anything you can imagine. It gets a little tricky if you're dealing with a number that had maybe repeating digits or something like that, something that's a little longer. But for these powers of two denominators, everything pretty much works out very well within three or four or five of these iterations through this algorithm. Speaking of numbers that are a little more tricky to devise a representation for, especially in binary, so we have one-third, one-fifth, and one-tenth. So the one-tenth, I mean, that one is really easy in our base 10 system, 0 0.1. But no matter how many bits I give you, I could give you infinite number of bits, infinite amount of time, and just say, go to town, you will never be able to represent one-tenth exactly in binary. So in that regard, it's called an irrational number. I mean, it's again, it's in base 10, it's the easiest thing you could ever do. But it doesn't matter. Irrational in base 2. Same goes for 1 fifth. 0 0.2. It's done in decimal. But again, I could give you an infinite number of digits, and it will not work. And then 1 third the same. And like, is there a rule for this? Yes. Everything we did in the previous slide, everything that has a denominator that ends up working as a power of 2, that one you can exactly represent in binary. But any other number that is not a power of 2 on the denominator side is what we call irrational, and we can only approximate as best as we can. We will see in some of these examples that we're doing for this class that when this happens, you know, at least for us, we just truncate wherever we need to truncate. And the reality is with the IEEE -E -E standard, we're not 100% sure. Do they round? Do they truncate? What do they do when they reach the limit? How do we know that the number being represented in binary is the closest one to the number we're actually trying to represent in decimal? That's something that we will not cover here in this class. So we will be showing here in a few slides that the, any number that would be represented as an integer, like that same number to be represented as a double or a float, even if it were like you know, 0.0, like 15,213, because right here, there you see that number in binary, you know, one 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 zero one one zero one one zero one one zero one, but that's how it would be represented as an integer. But when I convert that up into a float or a double, we will see very quickly that the 32 bits or the 64 bits do not even come close to representing that, or at least to our naked eye. Of course, when we apply the algorithm, we will convert that binary string into 15,213. But of course, right now those two things are completely separate from one another. Slide two shows us that even for a, you know, a number like 15,213, we can represent it in various different ways. So we already showed how to do that as a binary integer, at least on the unsigned front. And then we could convert that into an assigned number if we wanted to. We could also convert it into scientific notation, so 1.5213 times 10 to the fourth power. Or we could also convert that into binary scientific notation where we'd get something like 1.1101 blah 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 times 2 to the 13th power. And it goes for any number. So 1.20 here, slide number 3 or part 3, is something like 1.00110011. The 0011 is a repeating binary part of the number. I don't know how to do the overbar. But that's how you would represent things in at least two different ways. And then again, we're going to figure out a way to convert that into the IEEE standard uh, representation, either 32 or 64 bit.